So March 2nd of 2010, we came upon an agreement that this was going to be my test market, a two-year project to write my book on how to build a practice, an aesthetic market more than meets the eye. And I worked with this physician who was about to lose their practice and go to work at the hospital. It was a physician that was, that is, an internal medicine, infectious disease. So he learned to do injections, injectables, toxins, and all during the HIV crisis, quite frankly, because those were some of the first that came out to serve that market. He wanted to expand that because he found that that was cash and carry. That was not something he had to do with Medicare, Medicaid, and that was his nemesis and part of the reason he was leaving private practice and going in. So I said, okay, I'll come in, let's test it. I said, we're going to build it on doing events, old-fashioned guerrilla marketing. He said, good, I have no budget, you have no advertising. I said, I've never put an ad in the paper in over 45 years doing practice building. I've never done an ad in the paper for an, either a, an event or for the practice or for an employee. If I want an employee, I'm going to go recruit an employee. That way I know what I've got and they don't know I'm interviewing them. Same thing with doing the events. He said, oh, but we do, we do open houses. I said, wonderful. Good waste of time, waste of money, waste of energy. They already know you. You need people that you don't know. You need people that don't know you're here. They don't know you're doing this. They don't know what's going on. So I said, we're going to do this with events. A little unconventional. The first event I came up with was well, this is a coffee shop. I said, guess what? We're doing it. No, I'm a physician. Don't do that. I said, give me 30 days. If it doesn't work, I'll leave. No questions asked. No harm, no file. Not going to harm your reputation, not going to hurt you. Just trust me. So what I did was partner with the, this particular business and use their email list to build an email list. Think about it. I was starting at a practice doing this test for the book with no email list, no contacts, nothing. Come in and build my practice aesthetics. Okay. No esthetician, one physician that had 12 hours a week. That was it. That was the time I was given. The year prior, he had done just under 200,000 in toxins and fillers. Just under 200,000 toxins and fillers the year previous. When I left two years, two weeks later, he topped over 2 million in toxins and fillers. Toxins and fillers only. Not the peripheral stuff, not the estheticians. I added five estheticians. But this was just toxins and fillers that I built in two years and two weeks. He's still doing and maintaining this because of the standards that I put in place there and the people that I trained. But I knew very quickly I had to use other people's email lists. I wanted new people coming in. So I would approach businesses and say, you're so important in the industry. Everybody loves your coffee shop, your dress shop, your hoo-ha shop, or whatever it is. Love to do a promotion, cross-promotion. It'll help you. It'll help us. It'll help us both. It costs you nothing. It costs me nothing. I'll do everything for you. I'll do the food and beverage. I knew I could get a vendor to do that. I'll do all of the invitations for you. A little work on the computer completes that quickly. I'll send it out for you. All I need is your email list. I'll put it in my constant contact. Only thing I ask is, you show up. You'll have a little card table size place. You can sell some of your products, have your business cards, meet everyone that comes in. But you invite someone, your people as well. I'll get to meet your people, you'll get to meet my people. The first event we did with that little coffee shop on Old Dixie Highway in Vero Beach, Florida, called Cafe Mojo, we met 74 new people. 
74 new people. I had email addresses that I had never had before. Started building that. First thing they said, whoa, 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 whoa. if I give you my email list, will you give me my I would love to. I would give you my email list right now if I could. But you know because of HIPAA. I am so sorry. If it wasn't for HIPAA, I would give you that list right now. But unfortunately I can't because of that. But what I can do is everything for you. All I need is your list. Two years and two weeks, I had over 3,000 emails that I had gathered by connecting in the community and doing things that were out of the uh, out of the norm. The second one, I did at a dress shop. Dr. Thaler's friend, he said, I told you I'm a doctor, I don't do this. I said, fine. Just, we gave 30 days. Into that, he came as I was loading my dog and pony show in the car, and he said, just tell me where to go. I finally get what you're doing. Just tell me what to do. I said, okay, next week we're doing a day spa. And it proceeded from there. I brought the, the events into the office, but I always had someone hosting the event with me. But the caveat is, if you want to play in my sandbox, you've got to play by my rules. So you better have an email list. If you don't have an email list, I would say, oh, it's real nice meeting you. I have to run into you again. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. But if you've got an email list, we can certainly talk about let's putting an event together and doing something to build both of our businesses. So that was the way that I started building that business and went from there. The second thing that was mentioned earlier that I have a tremendous belief in was hands-on. I started doing events that included complimentary facials. Now I could get my hands on the patient that may not be interested in those fillers and toxins and other things in there. Now I can train my estheticians to say, I can feel the loss, you know, I feel the loss. Then it goes from, I see the loss, to, oh Lord, I can feel the loss. So it added more legitimacy and suddenly I learned that it went from, no, I don't want to talk about fillers and toxins, to well, is, is there somebody that could today? Maybe. Well, I, yeah, I guess I will. And I found that I had about 43% conversion from a complimentary facial to a procedure that occurred. And that was good for events. So I had the people coming in for the fillers, for the toxins, to the event, but also had 10, 15 people come in that not interested, that were getting free facials. Free facials, complimentary, cost little to nothing. It takes 15, 20 minutes to do a little cleansing, moisturizing facial, but suddenly I've got them feeling lost to having their loss taken care of. So for me, that was one way to transition people that were not interested in doing any of the fillers and toxins to doing them the same day that we were doing events. The other thing that I did in the practice was I took the approach, the answer to the question is yes. Now what is the question? An interesting thing happened that brought me a tremendous amount of referrals. I had a lady come in and just talking with her, she said, you know, I'm really hungry, I wish I had a hamburger. I wish I'd eat before I came. I knew she was going to be there a few minutes. So what I did was excuse myself, went out, had someone go and get her a hamburger. Put it on a plate, bring it in. That one person sent me over 20 people that I can account for just based on doing something that nobody else did. I never took a beverage without a little treat that was wrapped. It may be a biscotti, it may be a piece of candy. Someone wanted a latte. Guess what? I sent somebody to Starbucks. 
did what nobody else was doing. The first thing I did was go around to all the places that the practice was located and had a consultation to see what everyone was doing. But I knew I wanted to do what nobody else was doing. Always doing the unexpected and always doing what nobody else was doing. So I quickly learned. No one had a concierge approach to the aesthetic market. It was kind of an add-on. The practice was located on what I call Hospital Row. So within the parking lot, without moving your car, you could go to about 25 different locations to have fillers and toxins and not even move your car if you were willing to walk the one block to the hospital. So I knew I had to do something different to bring them back and I took a concierge approach to the aesthetic market and that was the answer to the question is yes, now what's the question? Whatever they wanted, I tried to accommodate them. They came back, they also sent people, I believe, because of that and that proved to be very successful for the practice. But the most successful thing was partnering in the community. I did at least one event every month. In the beginning, I did three events for six months. Then I did two events every month for six months. And then after 12, 12 months of success with the events, I went to one event a month. It was known in the community. It became a networking event. Didn't allow the doctor to speak. I said, if your mouth is open, you're losing money. <laughs> You're also putting them to sleep. I proved it. I allowed one, and I said, you knocked out the first three rows. <laughs> so no more, no more. And he understood. I was fortunate I had a physician that was desperate and understood and would do anything after a month of success. But it's a party. For me, it was always a gathering or a party that turned into sales. Yes, they were scheduled. I used toxins as my loss leader and sent out a party invitation. I never sent out a newsletter. I sent two emails a month. Two. That was all that was allowed. One the week before the event to come to this party and one the day before as a friendly reminder. People quickly learned that they didn't have to sit through a presentation to get to the cheese platter. They could come in and talk. So in the community, it became the place to go on the first Thursday of the month or the last Tuesday of the month. So it became something that was known in the community as a gathering. But I also learned if they came three times, I had a greater chance to sell them something because they suddenly had the trust they suddenly had the familiarity they knew everyone it was a party and everybody wanted to come <clears throat> Halloween party I did from freakies to fabulous that was my theme every party has a theme it can be bubbles Botox and beauty it can be freakies to fabulous but I started from that small beginning to I could average well over 100 people at an event and it was not unusual to do fifty, seventy-five, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 at an event with sales of toxins and fillers either injected that night because remember the fish, physician couldn't attend his own party. He had to be or the injector has to be in their room injecting. Mouth open, no money. Syringe in hand, money. <laughs> they understood that after seeing it a few times. So shut up and go and check.